A pleasant and a very good Thursday. Welcome to September 10th, 2020. Well, what a week it's been weather-wise. That, I guess, fits in with what has just happened over the last few days across the Rocky Mountain West. Fits in very well with how 2020 has gone so far. But we've got a little bit of good news. In fact, I got two good pieces of good news. First of all, the low is going to be slow to move out through Friday. Now, why is that good news? Well, at least for you folks in Colorado, this means another day and a half where it's going to rain and snow over some of the bigger fires, especially the ones in northern Colorado. We're going to see two more days of really cool and occasionally damp conditions. We're also going to see temperatures far below average for another day or two, not as cold as it's been, but that'll be good news. Now, we bust out of this just in time for the weekend. It'll be remarkable. This weekend is going to be one of those weekends where in a day or two you're going to forget about the storm because we're looking at 70s to near 80 degrees low humidity lots of sunshine the low moves out high pressure moves on in we're going to give you a la nina update and see where we're at i will tell you folks la nina explains a lot of what's happening and it has happened you take that with the solar activity or the lack thereof and everything really starts to make sense now let's take a look at where we are today Here's the upper low, still right over the Four Corners region, but it's going to slowly, today and tomorrow, go this way. It slowly begins to drift through. Now, the low is weakening, but you're going to see during the day today, rain showers, even a couple of thunderstorms rotate around the low and the counterclockwise spin around it, and that's gonna be producing showers in this area right here, today, tonight, and into early Friday. And as we mentioned at the beginning of the podcast, this is going to bring some of those fire areas of Colorado more moisture. By tomorrow afternoon, the low is all the way up into western South Dakota, western Nebraska. So we've got today, we've got tonight, and we've got Friday morning where the system is going to be impacting us. Now there's high pressure along the west coast that's going to grow and expand eastward. Unfortunately, for a little bit longer, continue dry in those bad fire areas of California, Oregon, and Washington. Although this guy here is going to bring hope by Monday night, Tuesday, and Wednesday the, to at least the Pacific Northwest to maybe get some rain on those fires. This is the precipitation forecast here over the next 48 hours. You can see as the upper level low drifts out, it's not going to produce heavy moisture every, anywhere really, but this is really good to see right here. Those areas are going to get more rain and snow. We're going to see some showers break out across the eastern plains of Wyoming, western South Dakota, and western Nebraska as well. Then all this dry air out here is going to move in over the weekend. Here we are by Sunday, high pressures over the Rockies. So this is going to give us just one of those classic, beautiful September weekends of weather. So get outdoors. Some of you are going to be cleaning up branches and limbs. Power companies still trying to get folks back online in many areas of Wyoming to get the power back up. Well, the weather will cooperate. This trough right here is going to meander slowly into the Pacific Northwest early next week, hopefully helping those folks out. These are our temperatures relative to average today. So you can see the cold continues to hang around here for a little bit longer. But look what happens by Sunday. It's gone. Warm air spreads east. Actually, temperatures by Sunday into Monday go a little bit above average across portions of Wyoming and northern Colorado. You can see the heat and the dryness up here in the Pacific Northwest. Now, let's update you with La Nina. Look at this map. I haven't shown you a map in a few weeks, but there's been a lot of changes. Look at the extent of the colder than average temperatures now moving across the subtropics of the Pacific. So this, if you were to do the mileage from here to here, that is a lot of water near the equator that has really continued to cool off. We still have this pocket of warmth up here in the North Pacific, which favors high pressure, which means there's more cold waves coming later this month and into October. But what we are really concerned about is La Nina because that is a dry signal. It's exactly what we saw this summer and spring, a dry signal for the Western United States. Well, it's getting more established and is getting more and more robust. So we're gonna go in the winter in a La Nina state. Taking a look at what the models are forecasting, this is where we are right now. With the exception of two computer models, 
all of the indications suggest a strong La Nina. Now we're getting close to one and a half to two degrees Celsius below average with those sea surface temperatures. That's getting into the moderate strong La Nina range. This means March, April, and May. So if it continues into the spring season right here especially, La Nina in spring is bad because we went La Nina last spring. I want to show you something. You see where the sea surface temperatures started to cross from being above average to near average to below average. See where that is? April, May, and June is when that happened. That's when we hit the skids. There's a very strong correlation in the Rockies and High Plains. When you go to La Nina, you just go into a drier pattern. And that's exactly when it happened. And we all know what's happened in the Western states since then. So as we look ahead, we're going to continue to see the sea surface temperatures in a La Nina state. Now this is La Nina region 3-4, which is out in the eastern Pacific near South America. If we go further out, El Nino regions 1 and 2, further westward into the Pacific, you can see that stays in negative territory all the way into March, April, and May as well. And you can see the huge drop in sea surface temperatures that took place April, May, and June. Thanks for watching and listening to the Day Weather Podcast. We'll see you on Friday.